Hey yo, what's good everybody? Y'all already know who it is. It is your boy Thesis. And I'm super, super excited to do something different. I wanted to basically show you guys behind the scenes of how my creative process is. And I'm just going to narrate, you know, basically pretty much what the process is. So now I'm basically going through and picking some sounds. Of course, Playbox is one of my definite favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Playbox. And usually when I'm, you know, picking sounds, a lot of times I'm trying to figure out the mode, the way I want to go. And a lot of times when I'm creating, I usually don't have, you know, a general idea. I just create and just go with it. So I uh, like this feel right now that we got coming out of the play box. So I think we can go ahead and go with that one. I'm definitely liking that right there. And a lot of times, once I get the feel of something that I like, you know, I'll go ahead and start off with that and then just see where the creative process takes me. I think we're going to go ahead and rock with that. And I think after that point, you know, the next thing basically for me to do is just kind of figure out where I want to go with the actual, you know, melody. Now, one of my next things I usually do is I'll do drums just to give it, you know, the foundation to see how I want to go. And one of my favorite drums of all time to this day from Native Instruments is Rudiments. And hands down, if it's not Rudiments, then it's definitely going to be Empire Break. Let me know what you guys think about the drums of what's your favorite in the comments. All right, so now I pretty much got the kit that I want. And as you can see, I'm using the S series MK3. And a while back, we were talking about how you wasn't able to use the new S series MK3 inside of machine. But as you see, you know, I'm still getting the color codes at the bottom. I'm getting it just like it would if it's the MK2. So I don't know. Uh, maybe it works with the new update that they do with the hardware. But uh, right now it recognizes as a MIDI uh, controller. But it's still giving me all of the stuff it would as if I was using it any other time. I'll do is I'll just add over top of that. which you usually I don't do the standalone mode all the time in the machine usually what I'll do is I'll bring in Cubase and then I'll put on a channel for a machine to be a VST plugin and for some odd reason it just to me it works a lot better for my workflow to where I can just easily drag and drop you know my idea as what I'm doing directly into Cubase and then start mixing um, as opposed to just you know doing here in machine so as you see i'm basically putting it as a waveform so it cuts down on the computer usage in machine now in my creative process a lot of times i'll play around with the key changes so what you see is i basically change the key of the melody because a lot of times i'll, I'll start high and then go low and right now I wanna add, you know, Somatics Origin on it just to give it a nice vintage wobble, you know, uh, add some vinyl from the preset. And then what I'll do is I'll adjust the vinyl and then pull back on the course a little bit just to give it a nice little wobble.
Now this is me just playing around with the drum to see if I'm gonna add something else to it. A lot of times, you know, I'll find something and then, you know, I'll keep it. But I definitely don't wanna do too much to the drum because I like the feel that I'm getting right now. So I'll just add, you know, that one little hi-hat right there towards the end of the four bar loop. All right, so next now, I don't want to go to the bass just yet. I want to add like a counter melody. So of course my next favorite is the Electric Mint from Native Instruments, one of the best guitar sounds, definitely. Um, of course there's a lot of other ones, but inside the Native Instruments, for me, in my opinion, you know, uh, Electric Mint is like top notch. So now we gotta figure out, you know, middle melody that kinda goes with what we play with Playbox. Now for the record, I'm not a piano player. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a piano player. I know nothing about music theory. I be, you know, basically just go off of the feel of how I create. And then a lot of times I'll just listen by ear and then, you know, over the course of time, I've picked up a little, you know, a little bit here and there. But as far as knowing like actual keys, that's a dead note. <laughs> Right now, just trying to figure out, you know, how I want to actually play the actual guitar with the melody. I think I got something, so I'm kind of feeling that so far. Now, I hear that the computer is starting to do that little, you know, crackle. So as you see, I went and then just made sure that the actual uh, guitar that I was playing is now a waveform so it's easier to you know, manipulate. I think it's time for us to go ahead and add a bass. One of my favorite basses, of course, is the old school Rickenbacker bass. Uh, but my favorite is definitely Icon. But for this case, I want to just go ahead and just, you know, make sure that the computer isn't going to do too much because Icon, for mine, kind of takes a little bit more. But uh, Rickenbacker is definitely a, a second best. So now as you see, I'm just doing some basic house cleaning, making sure that, you know, the computer is not going to do too much and make sure that all the instruments and sounds that I have so far are in waveform. And then what I'll do is I'll go and make sure that those instruments that I used what is no longer in it, you know, because it still recognizes the instrument. And then, you know, from there, once you clear them out, should be straight. It's a cool little vibe so far. So now we gotta go ahead and add a bass line in. Now, again, not being, you know, the person that plays the piano, um, you're gonna see a nice, long, drawn out version of me figuring out how and where I wanna play with this bass line. A lot of times when I get like this, I'll go in and change the melody and change the counter melody and drop it a key. It all depends on, you know, the creative the creative mode of what I'm going. Definitely take me a little bit longer than I usually went 
anticipate for the bass line, but I got a feel of, you know, I think I got an idea now. Once I get it, you know, I'll automatically hit record because I don't want to forget how I played it. And as a producer, you know how that can get. You can forget it real quick. So now I'm just trying to figure out if before I do the bass line, is there anything else I want to add? Anything else I want to do? I want to probably change the key here because I want to play the bass line different. So I'm going to drop it down then drop the actual counter melody down as well. Still a vibe, still a vibe though. Taking it a little longer, like I said, for me to kind of figure out. Cause usually I'm, not, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not really good with bass lines. But what I usually do is sometimes I'll take the MIDI and then I'll, you know, from the MIDI of what I played, and then I'll drop it inside the bass line, and then take out all the high notes and then just keep the bass notes. That's just a quick little tip that I learned uh, from seeing some other producers do it. But in this case, because I'm playing it out already, you know, save the waveform for the melody. Now I gotta kinda figure out how I'm gonna do the bass line. Appreciate you guys. You guys already know who it is. It's your boy D.